Right guys, I've got one question for you. Have you ever tried cloud gaming before? I've tried out pretty much every cloud gaming service that has been released over the past few years in hope that it's actually going to be good and playable and runs at a good refresh rate and is really responsive and overall can just replace a gaming laptop or a handheld gaming device. Each time I've been massively disappointed because there's always been problems. For example, Google Stadia when that came out. I don't know how Google Stadia messed it up because it wasn't the fact that they didn't have enough money to do it. Google's a massive company, they could have made it work. The platform itself looked awesome. It was designed like Xbox or PlayStation. It had this whole interface which looked incredible. But the issue is, is Google shot themselves in the foot. They tried to make as much money as possible by not letting you link your existing accounts, not letting you play with people on other platforms. You had to buy every single game through the Google Stadia store. So for example, I would have loved to be able to cloud game FIFA, for example, back in the day. I couldn't link my EA account that I owned the copy of FIFA, FIFA 20 or whatever it was at the time on PC. You couldn't do that. You had to buy the full game at £60 again, and you didn't even know if it was going to run well. There was no trial period, there was nothing like that. You'd had to cash up 60 quid for a gamble, basically. You didn't know if your internet was going to be fast enough. You didn't know if it was going to be able to run it. You didn't even know if there was going to be anyone playing the game at all to be able to matchmaker them against. And that's where Google Stadia failed. They didn't do it right. Whereas Microsoft, on the other hand, they've taken the different approach. They're not making cloud gaming their main source of income. They're selling you Xbox Game Pass Ultimate because you want an Xbox and you want games. However, there's an extra feature there that you can all, if you're not at home, you can stream some games or you can try a game out for the first time if you haven't played it before, before you commit to downloading a 100 gigabyte game. Cloud gaming for Xbox is great. You don't get charged for loads of games. You've got Game Pass library already and it just lets you stream, stream the Game Pass games that you're already paying for. That's why Xbox Cloud Gaming is fairly successful. But that's the main reason why I personally believe Stadia never took off, is because people weren't ready for it didn't necessarily have the right internet connections and they weren't willing to gamble and go on to a completely different platform, pay full price for games that might not even work well or there might not even be other people playing it on that platform. So it was the wrong time for Google and they didn't do it very well, that's for sure. However, there's been one more cloud gaming service that's popped up over the past few years and I think it's been around for four years now. I've only just tried it out recently and that is Nvidia GeForce Now. It's been around for four years now. I've never really paid any interest towards it because I've had poor experiences with Google Stadia, Nvidia, uh, sorry, Xbox Cloud Gaming. Overall, they've all been pretty below par. Not something I've wanted to play for long term anyway. However, the other day I thought, you know what? Let's try it out. I've had friends at work tell me GeForce Now is absolutely incredible and it's not like the other cloud to gaming services. And it got to the point where I had to try it out. I had to, because everyone was saying so many good things about it and I wanted to try it out because you know what? I personally would love it if I could just carry around my MacBook or an ultra thin laptop, play games on my phone, my iPad, wherever I am in the world and just stream those games and play it at ultra high settings without any battery drain, really loud fan noises, having to carry a battery pack around with me. No, no, no. If you could just stream those games at ultra high quality, I'd love it, and that's where I personally believe the future will be for handheld gaming. However, we're not 100% there yet, but this is the best we've seen so far. So with GeForce Now, Nvidia do offer three separate service and pricing plans for you to choose from. Now, there is a free option. It is downright terrible. I would personally say, if you want to try out GeForce Now, don't even touch the free tier. Just buy the priority or buy the ultimate tier for just one month. Try it out, because the free tier will put you off for life. You'll be sat in queues waiting for 100 people in front of you to get off the game. And then when you actually get on the game, the quality is very shocking and it's not great at all. I tried it a few months ago because you actually couldn't get into the ultimate tier to try it out. Uh, therefore, I could only actually try the free tier. But the other week, I saw another video on GeForce Now saying how good it is. And they've updated it to the RTX 4080 tier for £20 a month. So I decided to check it out again. And you can now actually pay £20 a month for GeForce Now and you don't have to pay for the six months up front. So I pulled the trigger, I tried it. I have my MacBook plugged into my 42 inch OLED TV. I linked up all my game libraries to my Nvidia GeForce Now account, which gives you access to play all the games. The first game I loaded up was quite an old game now, but Tom Clancy's The Division, one of my favorite games of all time. 
and as soon as I loaded it up, it shocked me straight away of how good it looked. I was playing it at 4K 60fps with HDR, Nvidia Reflex, all, all the good stuff and my word, it shocked me. Bearing in mind this was on Wi-Fi as well, this is before I tried it on Ethernet as well and I'll talk about that in a second. However, it is incredible. Now, is it as good or is it, is it as smooth as playing if you had an actual RTX 4080 rig? Absolutely not. However, if you are someone who hasn't got a particular high-end gaming PC or you haven't actually got a console or anything like that, this is a really good option. Now, it's not all perfect. I will talk a little bit later about what I don't like about it, what there are some issues about it are. As of March 2024, there isn't a better cloud gaming service than GeForce Now. I will put some gameplay on screen now for you to see what the division looks like and it is really beautiful, I love it a lot. I was playing 4K ultra settings because the RTX 4080 I was streaming from can absolutely run anything, anything you throw at it. For me personally, I liked how that looked more than playing it on a PS5 for example. But unfortunately it's not all perfect and like any cloud streaming service, the quality of your experience completely revolves around the internet connection you've got. Now I've got really good Wi-Fi, however at the end of the day it's Wi-Fi, it's not going to be particularly stable, that's for sure. I plugged in an Ethernet cable, a massive Ethernet cable going up the stairs, plugged it into my MacBook and look at the speeds I'm getting now, I'm getting 3 ping, 900 megabits per second, over 100 megabits upload speed, about as good internet as you can possibly get in the UK right now. And after that, I went back to the GeForce Now settings and maxed out everything, loaded it up again and it's a completely different experience on Ethernet. And obviously I understand and respect that not everyone can play it with a wired connection, but the difference is out of this world. Not necessarily for the response time, because the response time felt very similar, but just for the picture quality as well as the response time, and the stability as well, there was less stutters going on, it was just overall a great experience. But yeah, like I said, the main difference between playing Ethernet and playing on Wi-Fi is the picture quality. You'd be surprised how good the response time is, whether you're playing on Ethernet or you're playing on Wi-Fi, the difference is negligible. However, not every game was as good as each other. For example, I loaded up Forza Horizon 5. One issue I did encounter on GeForce Now when playing any Xbox game is that every time you load up an Xbox game, it asks you to log in every single time, and that is a pain in the backside. However, it, once you're actually in the game, it looks great. However, as soon as you start driving, the entire image just falls apart. Well, not entire image, it's still playable, absolutely, and still looks miles better than Xbox Cloud Gaming. However, you can definitely see much more noticeable noise within the image, and especially when it comes in with the motion as well, it's not as crystal clear. However, yet again, the response time is awesome. And because you're streaming from an RTX 4080, I was playing at 4K, and I was playing on the absolute max settings and I was still getting over 100 FPS. The only thing holding me back from playing at 120 FPS at 4K was the fact that my MacBook Pro with the M1 Max only has a HDMI 2.0 port, so I couldn't actually get the most out of it. But to say that I'm streaming this game at 4K, 60 FPS, and it's almost instant response time, all the way from somewhere in middle of Europe, it's so impressive and, I, and genuinely, it's the biggest improvement I've seen in cloud gaming and it's really promising for the future. And another game I really enjoyed playing on this one was Cyberpunk 2077. I, I had the game set to 4K with the new ray tracing overdrive mode. It looked absolutely incredible and I would go as far as saying it's a much better experience than playing on console. And, and the best thing about Nvidia GeForce Now compared to playing something like Xbox Cloud Gaming is that it gives you so much flexibility. If you're playing on an ultra wide monitor, for example, you can change the aspect ratio to 21 by 9. If you've got a laptop with a 16 by 10 aspect ratio, you can play at that aspect ratio, it's not a problem. You can almost max out an iPhone screen as well, for example. It is really impressive on how it works. Now, is this going to replace your PC? Absolutely not. It's not for everyone. Now, if you are a competitive player who wants to play like Valorant or Fortnite and get the absolute minimal input lag, you're not going to play this. You're not. You're going to turn it on. You got. You can. You can tell the input lag straight away, and you're not. You're going to turn it off, and you're going to go back to your PC. For casual players, people who can't exactly afford a console or an expensive PC, this is a great alternative, and you'd be surprised how good it actually looks and feels. But one of the massive disadvantages with GeForce Now is the lack of game support, and I'm not too sure why this is. But for example, there's no Rockstar game support, there's no GTA, there's no Red Dead Redemption, there's no EAFC. 
Although there are many EA games on there, there's no EA FC. Which is surprising, because there are games like Battlefield on there, but there's, and Apex Legends is available, but there's no EA FC. It must be a licensed thing. Which is a big shame, really, because there's so many games that would run so well on GeForce now, but there's just not the compatibility for it. And that's just the main thing holding it back. If there were a few more games available that I actually wanted to play, then I genuinely think this would be something I would pay for long term and use every day. And it, is, it shocks me how good it is, but it's not quite perfect and it's not really Nvidia's fault to be fair. There's obviously going to be issues with licensing and things like that, which is a shame, but it is what it is. However, I urge you to try this out because you'll be shocked at how good it is. And an NVIDIA claim as well that if you're playing at the N the 1080p 240Hz mode, you're actually getting faster input lag than you would be playing directly on an Xbox Series X, which is just mental. That you can actually stream a game and it's more responsive than playing it on console. Mental. But that's going to do it to today's video. Let me know what you think about NVIDIA GeForce Now and just the state of cloud gaming in general. Honestly, I'm really impressed and I'm not going to lie, I'm going to keep paying for GeForce Now for the next couple of months and just hope they add more games in the future as well. But that's going to do it for today's video. If you enjoyed the video, do me a favour, leave a like and subscribe to the channel, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.